The ice caves near Bayfield, Wisconsin have attracted 80,000 people and now they've attracted Wisconsin Eye. So it's March 7th, 2014 in Bayfield. We're at the Apostle Island Visitor Center in Bayfield waiting for our guide, Rick Erickson, Wisconsin Teacher of the Year and to students. So what's so cool about the caves that brings you back? Those of you that have been here before. You, I don't know, they're just, they're it's secret. the oh, uncertainty. You don't know that they're going to still be here again next year. Yeah, that's true. Like they haven't been here since 2009. Uh, isn't it a thing that they like change every week, or is that just a thing? I not every week, every, every year, time. definitely. About 90% of the ice or so, 80% of it that you're gonna see is probably from wave splash. That's gonna be all that bottom, lower stuff that's the big formations. Uh, but you're also going to see some stuff that looks like the, in caves, you know, the little formations, the icicles that hang down. What are those called? Stalactites. Stalactites, exactly, the ones that hang down. And those are caused by seepage, so there's water coming out of the sandstone, and as it comes out, it freezes and forms these long icicles. <laughs> No kidding. That's amazing. That's remarkable. I truly think it's remarkable. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to see nature this close and the power and the force. Yep. <laughs> Why is it that this is the first time since 2009? Oh, uh, lake temperatures, uh, the amount of freezing. The, the, uh, over the last few years, the lake has fluctuated quite a bit about how much of it freezes and how much doesn't. And so the park doesn't open this unless they know that the ice is solid enough to, uh, to handle the people walking out here. And for the last few years, there just hasn't been enough ice for people to come out. We walked out here primarily on the lake. And I mean, the beach is a real narrow beach. So we were walking on the water. And so in you know, the last couple of years, there hasn't been enough I used to walk As on. a veteran physics teacher, science teacher, where are you on the issue of climate change? Bottom line, there, there is climate change. I think the question is how much of it is, is caused by humans and how much isn't. In ways that gravely concern you as a veteran? You know, I don't know that they gravely concern me. I mean, there are a lot of things that gravely concern me and it, that are related to the concept of climate change. I think just we as people need to, we need to pay more attention to what we're doing. Okay. Um, whether it's because of climate change or pollution, you know, in the 70s, 80s, the, the, the big issue was acid rain. Yes. And acid rain didn't go away but it, it's no longer the big issue um, because we responded to it, but it's still present and it's still something we have to think about. So all, you know, all those issues are there. I just think we as a population need to be far more careful about what we're doing to this planet. Um, the climate change, we're seeing it on Lake Superior. There's no question about it. Uh, the lake temperatures are warming. Um, the lake temperatures are warming faster than the air temperatures are warming. So who nominated you for Teacher of the Year? My superintendent did. The, the nomination actually initially is for the Cole Fellowship. They choose a high school, a middle school, an elementary school, and a special ed teacher of the year. It is a great honor. So I was the high school teacher of the year this year. And it's been, it's been, a, uh, it's just been a great experience. Wisconsin and I are reporting from under many tons of lake ice. All right, so this is the this is the cathedral. Um, 
Some people call it the crevasse. It goes quite a ways back. Um, there's a couple of little walkways over the top that people aren't supposed to walk on in the uh -huh. summer, but they do. Uh, but the park has them kind of blocked off. And you'll be able to see when you go in, you'll be able to look up. It's, this is pretty cool. This is the deepest one of all of them that goes back. Yeah. Okay, what are we looking at? Oh, wow. Well, okay, so what is frost? Is it frost? Yeah, there's like a layer of this air ice. Oh, that's really cool. He hasn't answered your question. I have not. So you want to know like what it is, like why it's like why that? It I don't know. It it looks really thin to me, and it looks like almost. I mean, that's seepage. So there's water like dripping down the sides there. It looks very thin, and I don't know if there's been some melting that's been going on behind it. Right, so is water dripping down through very minute openings? So it's kind of, yeah, it's coming out like between those layers. Yeah. So water's coming out and freezing as it comes out, dripping down the icicle and extending the icicle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this one's a fun one to paddle into in the summer in the kayak if the waves aren't bad. Oh. Oh, is this the floor right here? No. Oh, I'll... I'll let Rick do this. We can do it. We can do a percussion thing. Here. Yeah, this goes, I think you could crawl back through here. How do you guys do it? Pretty good. Put your feet up. I hope you have a nice view on that. Oh. 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 Welcome to the ice caves. Wow! What an experience! But it could also be that as it's dripping, it's also building a column up from the bottom. Although these, like, like I'm gonna guess, like that's probably what's happening. Building from the bottom. Oh, and sure. Bottom and the top. Because they're wider here. Yeah. So they're like, it's dripping from the top, yep. and at the, and then as it hits down here, it freezes down here. So it's, so it's building downward and upward at the sure, same time sure. and it forms a column. They're the cathedral yep. for obvious reasons because of the height and the beauty, but yep. what's the science take away from this? Uh, you know, there are several. Uh, one of them clearly is the forces of nature. Uh, you know, we have physics students out here and one of the things I talked to them about before we came was, as you're out there, I want you to look at, uh, you know, at, at what you're seeing and, and try to imagine what forces cause that because forces cause change and this clearly has been changed and so you've got uh, you know amazing erosion uh, you've got the, the ice formations and the fact you know there's, there's also just the 
there's the science, but there's also just the beauty of it. You know, yes. I've had a lot of kids who they like hearing the science, but when they're in a place like this, they just want to experience the magic of it. And part of that is the fact that we're standing on Lake Superior. So, you know, in the summer, you wouldn't be standing here. A totally different experience. Uh, if you come in here in kayaks, you get a, a very different experience. You know, you can paddle far back. Um, the ice formations here are, are great because the kids like to slide on them and get back in there as far as they can. And uh, so really, I, it's the forces of nature is the big science takeaway here. Yeah, okay, so um, you've got some seepage coming out of the sides. Like you can see, you know, these formations here where there's water coming out of the sandstone. And so you start to get, you start to get downward columns. So you've got uh, dripping coming out of the sandstone yes, and coming then, down. Yep. And so the, the ice is growing downward, but as it hits the ice down here, it also freezes. And so it grows up at the same time. So you have like you would in a cave where you can have a stalactite formation. You can also have growth from the bottom and then you get these columns. Um, and some of these columns are beautiful. And you, you know, some are really thick. Um, some are thicker at the bottom than they are at the top. They're all, they're all very unique. So the blue color on the ice here, uh, there's water seeping out from the sandstone. Uh, that water is not carrying a lot of sandstone. If it had a lot of sandstone in it, you'd see the brownish, reddish colors that you're seeing on the edges. The blue is a result of this water doesn't have a lot of air bubbles in it, so it's just solid water uh, freezing. So it's blue for the same reason that the lake is blue. The lake is blue because uh, as the sunlight goes in, red colors are absorbed and the blue is still bouncing around in there and so that's reflected back to our eyes and so the same thing here as sunlight goes in uh, the blue light is bouncing around and coming back and the red colors are being absorbed so there's the blue ice formation as you said we're standing on lake superior we are standing on lake superior <laughs> yeah. What a, yeah what a great show yeah we're approaching the keyhole arch Another one of the favorite formations. It's another favorite in kayaking also. Um, but yeah, you can see here uh, that there's a carved out section here that's like a little keyhole. Yes. And uh, so it's a, it's a pretty cool spot. It's cool in the summer in kayaks. It's great now and people love it. I see a lot of people doing exactly that, taking photos in front of it or inside of it. Or... Well, I, uh, what, what may happen, uh, I wonder if you agree, that when people, 80, 90, 100,000 people see this, it's, they're probably going to return in the good weather, won't I, they? I think, yeah, I know that I've heard a lot of comments about I want to come back in the summer, see what it's like in the summer. Absolutely. So, you know, there's constant erosion going on here. So there, over time, this keyhole will get bigger and bigger and bigger. There's going to be more and more erosion. Eventually, at some point, this will collapse. So what we're viewing today is uh, is just a you know it's a it's a peek into you know what we have today. But you know, maybe several hundred years down the road, that won't. There'll be something else. There'll be a different cave. So these are constantly changing, and they don't change overnight. They don't change in a you know very like in a, on a rapid time scale, but. Um, a hundred years ago, people probably saw different sea caves and a hundred years from now, they're going to see different ones. Okay. If you were saying that this is an example of where you can see what used to be the shoreline. Right, exactly. If you look up 
Up above, you can see there's some places where uh, the sandstone is broken off and you've got a flat surface, but you can see little ripples in the, in the flat, in the sandstone. Yeah. You can see that in several places. And so you can imagine like in the summer when you're walking on a beach and you're looking in that shallow water, you see that little, those little ripple formations in the sand. And so that's exactly what that is. So it was a, that was a shallow water area, like a beach area, where the, as the water is flowing and it's depositing the sand, you get these little ripples. And so that's those little water ripples frozen in time in the sandstone. Wow, so you're seeing, exactly, so you're seeing what was the beach level at one time. Uh, just stunning, beautiful. So Wisconsin and I wanted to experience the ice caves. So popular, drawing 70, 80, 90,000 people. So we asked for a park service guide, but they were getting so many queries from media, they're no longer giving guides. So we probably even found somebody better. Rick Erickson, Wisconsin's Teacher of the Year, is a science and physics teacher, chemistry and physics teacher at Bayfield High School. He agreed to give Wisconsin I a tour and he invited eight of his students and they joined us. And I am in a little niche which is part of the garage. We stopped at three places in the ice caves. We've been here almost three hours and it's just stunningly beautiful. And we're surrounded by people who are crawling on their stomachs in little burrows and they're discovering the raw beauty of nature. And it's really been a privilege to come here. And I wanna thank Rick Erickson and his students Thanks Rick. Thanks Rick for taking all my questions and explaining what happened here. And um, it's important to remember that these ice caves have not been formed where people can see them like this since 2009. So this is Steve Walters enjoying reporting from the ice caves in Bayfield, Wisconsin for Wisconsin Eye.